All right, in this video, we're gonna be talking about color schemes in NeoVim um, and specifically how to set them, not create them. In the future, I might show you how to create a color scheme in NeoVim. Uh, if you're following along with the NeoVim from scratch series, then you can check out this repository. There'll be a link in the description and you can check out the 04 color scheme branch here to get the finished product of when I'm finished with, uh, with this code here. Uh, if you're following along with your own NeoVim config, that's fine too. You just won't have the exact same stuff as me, so you'll have to just write it out yourself, but there's really not a lot that goes into this anyway. Okay, so let's open up our init.lua file here, and you'll notice that we just have some default color scheme. Now, yours might be different from mine. I'm not really sure how the default color scheme is uh, calculated, but I've seen it, I think, different on other people's machines. So, but anyway, this is how it looks on mine. This is what just NeoVim looks like for me. Um, but let's change our color scheme. So actually, let's not even write any code yet to change it. We're gonna just go into command mode and we're gonna just go like this and we'll go to like dark blue and it'll change the color scheme for us just like that. And you can see that there's a bunch of color schemes. You can just press tab to go through them, right? So we're not gonna set another one right now. The first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go, and you can, wherever you set your options, you can set this option anywhere you want, but uh, we're gonna go to our options and we're just gonna set term GUI colors equal to true, because a lot of terminals support like a lot more colors than what NeoVim supports out of the box, so you just set term GUI colors equal to true and you'll get a lot more, uh, you'll get a lot more color options. So let's uh, save this and get out of here and we'll reopen init.lua, and you'll notice our default color scheme has actually changed a little bit. Um, the cursor highlight is no longer just like an underline, and there's just other colors, right? Like all the colors seem to have somewhat changed, and that was because we set term GUI colors. All right, so now what I'm gonna explain is, you know, and we already talked about if, I, if we come down here and do color scheme and then choose one, um, we can do that, but it won't persist. So like when I save this and I come back in, it's back to normal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually persist one of these color schemes. So we're gonna do vim.cmb, and then we're gonna pass this a string, and inside that string will be a vim script. And if you don't know any vim script, that's fine. There's not much vim script to know here. The only thing you're gonna do is you're gonna put color scheme, and then for instance, we'll put a dark blue. That was one of the ones from earlier, right? And that's exactly this command, right? So if we do color scheme dark blue, like that, you'll notice that this command down here looks exactly like that right there. So that's basically all we're doing. Uh, what vim.cmd is, is it's just a way to run vim script from Lua essentially. Um, but you'll just pass all of it in a strings just like this. So we're gonna save this and reopen it and now the color scheme is dark blue. Another one I think is elf lord like that. Okay, and now that one's set. And so now we can change our color scheme to be any of the built-in color schemes uh, for NeoVim. Um, my problem with a lot of the built-in color schemes for NeoVim is I don't really like any of them personally. So I usually go and get another one. Um, I usually install like a plugin for a color scheme and there's tons of color schemes available as plugins um, out there. If you don't know how plugins with NeoVim work, I recommend checking out the video before this one, but if you want any other color schemes besides these built-in ones, you're gonna need some sort of way to pull in plugins, right? Okay, so let's do that. Let's go take a look at, well, let's see, should I explain that or this first? Let, well, let's let's go right to our plugins so that way we can uh, we can install some other, some other um, color schemes. So we're gonna go to plugins here and I'm using Packer, so you can see it's just like the normal, like, you know, use thing, whatever it is, use plugin, whatever it may be. And so what I'm first gonna do actually is I'm going to use a plugin called Lunar Vim Color Schemes, right? So that's what this is right here. And what it is, is it's a repo with a bunch of color schemes that you can try out. Um, I think I have like maybe six or something like that in there, and every now and then I add a different one. So the way my config works is if I save this file, um, it'll just install that for me. So it should have installed it for me. Yeah. And so now what we should be able to do is when we close this, we'll reopen this. And now if we do color scheme and start to tab through, you'll notice that there's a few more available. So you'll see one called Aurora is available. 
Um, it's kind of like Nord a little bit, if you've seen that one. There's another one called um, Code Monkey, which kind of looks a lot like that. But you, you'll see, if we, if we had more code here, you would see the differences between the color schemes. Um, and then there's a few others, like one darker and so on and so forth. But anyway, yeah, so these are some color schemes that I just have all in one repository so you can try them out and see which ones you like. So if we want to persist one of these color schemes, and maybe if we open up um, the plugins.lua file, you'll get a better look at what some of these look like, just because there's more code in here, right? Okay, so if we want to persist one of these, it's the exact same thing. Um, we're just going to do color scheme. Um, for instance, I think another one I have in here is dark plus and we'll do that and we'll save this reopen this and we have the dark plus color scheme here um, and let's come into here and you can see what that one looks like right okay so and by the way uh, this is a color scheme too without tree sitter so it doesn't have all of the perfect syntax highlighting but again I'll uh, I'll explain more of that in a future video so now let's, that, that's basically it. Um, you don't really need to do much more than that, but we're gonna talk about a few more color scheme plugins now. So just some popular ones, like one right here is called Tokyo Night from uh, Folka. And he, let's see, all we have to do for this is we can just copy this guy over here and we'll go to user, whoops, did something in NetRW there. And we'll go to user, we'll go to um, plugins. Yeah, we're already here. And we'll just paste that in like that. Save again, it installed it. And then let's just reopen this. And if we do color scheme, Tokyo, we should probably just find it, yeah. Tokyo night, there you go, right? And again, obviously you can set this color scheme the exact same way that we're setting all of the other color schemes. Okay, so imagine that, um, and, and that's pretty much it. I have a few other ones up here. You can check out under the Lunar Vim org, one darker, and then also dark plus that I have under there. Actually, these are both one darker, one second. If we go back one and we go into dark plus, this is another one that I made that I fully support. Um, but anyway, so this is, you know, just basically how to set them. Um, since we didn't persist that one, it'll go back to being dark plus. But imagine that, okay, we have Tokyo Night, and that's really, that's totally it. Um, what we're going to talk about now is we're going to talk about some Lua concepts. So if you're interested in learning um, just some Lua concepts, then you can stick around for the rest of the video. If not, you already know how to set color schemes, and you should be fine. Okay, so let's talk about um, a problem that you might run into. Let's say we set Tokyo Night, okay, whoops. Let's say we set Tokyo Night and like this, and it works, that's fine, but that's because we actually have the plugin installed still. So if we go to um, where all of our plugins are and we actually remove this plugin, Tokyo Night, like this, right? And now we come back over here and we start up NeoVim, now we get an error because it doesn't exist. And there will be time. There will be times when you don't have um, like a like a plugin actually installed. And if the plugin's not installed, and this very often happens to people who don't have like their color scheme installed, and then like your whole config breaks. And so we're going to talk a little bit about like how do we handle that error in in our config. We don't we don't want to see that all the time, right? So let's get rid of this, and let's make this nice and big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up our init.lua file. And instead of doing it like this, vim.cmd color scheme Tokyo Night, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to require a separate file for our color scheme. So we're gonna do user.color scheme like that, okay? And then we're gonna go under Lua user color scheme. And you'll see I just have the exact same thing in this file here. Um, it's just that I am asking for the default color scheme up here at the top. Okay, so now we'll reopen it. Obviously we're looking for the default color scheme now, so we're not getting an error anymore, so that's fine. But what if we wanna look for the Tokyo Night color scheme, and even if we don't have it, that's fine, we just, we'll just ignore it and we won't, we won't throw an error, right? 
So how we can do that is we can get rid of this here. And then what we'll do is we'll uncomment this. And we'll set this color scheme here. And I'll explain all of this code in a second. But we'll set color scheme here equal to um, Tokyo Night, like that. OK. And before I explain the code, I'll just show you. OK. Uh, what's happening now is it just says color scheme Tokyo Night not found. And that's fine. We can, you know, that's we can move on. We we don't have to go through that big error page or anything like that when we first start up our config. Um, so let's show you how that actually works. So what we're doing in Lua here is we're setting a local variable and we're setting color scheme equal to a string called Tokyo Night. Then uh, let's take a look at this line on line five. We're saying local status OK. So and then we have this underscore here, right? Like, so what is this underscore doing there? And we're doing a protected call to vim.cmd. And then we're passing that a, a, uh, a string here. Now, these two dots in Lua are string concatenation. So what we're doing is this is a string called color scheme. And then you'll see this like here. We're basically reconstructing this. So look at vim.cmd right there. OK, you can see vim.cmd right here. That's the first thing that you pass to a p call as a function. And then the next thing you pass to a p call is um, is uh, like the arguments to that function. And so a p call again is a protected call. So if it errors out, that's it'll give us a status. And then we can just kind of handle that, right? But anyway, so this is the string that we're passing. So you'll see color scheme, and then you'll see I put a space right there. Then the string concatenation, and then the color scheme. So what will that look like when it's you know all concatenated? It'll look exactly like this right here. Right, except for instead of default, it'll say um, in this case it'll say Tokyo night. Whoops, night like that. So with an O. So that's what this will look like when it's done. Um, now what this usually is is a return value from the module. So this is usually you know if if it returned anything at all, then that's what would be there. Since we don't care about the return value, we're just going to put an underscore. Let me show you a scenario where we actually do care about the return value. Um, I do the same thing with Packer. Packer is a plugin. Um, if I can't find Packer, right, then I just return and I leave, right? Uh, if I can find Packer, then this is it returns me an instance of Packer, and then I can do things with that plugin, right? Like I can do things with it. I can do like Packer in it or Packer startup or whatever else, right? So let's go into color scheme again. And so I'm just not using that. I'm just setting the color scheme. There's nothing that it returns that's useful to me. So the the common thing to do, and if you are like a Python programmer, you've probably seen this before, but anything you're not using, you just put an underscore and, and then it's fine. So the other thing it returns is status. And then we just write this next piece of code. Um, we say if not status okay, then, and then we're gonna do vim.notify color scheme um, we're going to do some string concatenation, the actual color scheme, which is Tokyo Night, and we say it's not found. And so that's what you saw when we first started um, when we first started up NeoVim this time. You saw that it caught the error, and it was like, all right, and it just gives me a notification just to tell me like, hey, the color scheme's not found, and then it returns, and so then I don't see an error. So when we start this up, it's like, okay, color scheme Tokyo Night is not found. Now, what happens if we actually go and install it? So if we go into our plugins um, and we, you know, I, I just went and deleted it earlier, right? So now if we just do, we could just do Packer update or we could probably just do Packer install. Okay, and now you can see right there, installed Folka Tokyo Night. And uh, let's get out of here like this. Okay, and we'll just quit out, reopen this, and now Tokyo Night's there. You don't see the message anymore, and that's fine. Um, by the way, if you ever think that there should be a message and you just can't see it, just type in messages like this, and then you can go through all of your old messages. Uh, that's just another, I guess, quick like Vim tip, I guess. All right, so that's how you would set it, and that's how you would set it, and that's kind of some error handling in Lua, and I'm going to be employing that pattern a lot throughout um, this series, like pretty much with every single plugin, I immediately do something like this to require it or whatever, just because when you see all these errors just show up in your config, it just, it can get out of hand really fast, right? 
Um, so yeah, that's how you do that. I don't think there's really much else to setting color schemes and also making sure things don't break. So I think that's pretty much it for this video. Um, yeah, so also you can check out the Lunar Vim, uh, where is it? I think I had, well, you can go into the Lunar Vim organization. I have two color schemes that I like to support and I like try to make sure that they look decent um, and keep up with new color scheme highlights and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, that's one darker.nvim and then also darkplus.nvim. Um, there's also a big color schemes repository over here. And if you look under the templates file, you can see all the names of the color schemes that I support in here, but I don't like have full support for them. They're just kind of ways to test them out. And that was the repository that we, um, we added in the beginning of this video. Um, probably the most popular one that I've seen most people install and use is uh, Folka's Tokyo Night. So that's another really popular one. It supports pretty much like everything and then also has a bunch of um, extra stuff that you can do with it. Uh, like you see all these options down here. You can set like different variants of the theme. Um, you can set italic comments, like all these different things, right? So this is an example of a color scheme where there's a ton of other things that you can set with like options and things like that. Uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. So if you're enjoying the series and you want to support the project, you can sponsor me and the project over on GitHub, or you can support me over on Patreon. Um, that's it for this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.